So, I think I can pretty much safely say I can just skip uh, round three and four, which is uh, size and accessories, because even though he has the Beast Glove, that's not really an accessory, and because uh, that's like permanently attached to him, you can't remove it. And technically speaking, none of these guys come with anything, and they're all about the same size. Even though scale-wise, he should be about up to yay high. But still, that's like movie scaling versus figure scaling. And if you want to be technical, none of these guys are really in scale because they're all too small. 337 feet, I believe, for Kong? Whatever. Um, but with that being said, we can move right on to price. And I can automatically tell you that there is actually kind of a price difference. MSRP, these two are about the same at 20 bucks. Sounds good. He was actually about 25 so he's a tad bit more pricey than the others. Keep in mind, I'm going off U.S. retail, so that means, basically speaking, um, all of these guys are 20 20 25 Walmart, Target, that's how much they would be. So, technically speaking, these two would be the cheapest, and availability are, are kind of all the same. Uh, cause like for a long while, all of these guys were, well, not all of these guys, but they were all sold at the same, uh, same places, Walmart, Target, Toys R Us, if your country still has it. I don't know about Best Buy. I know they carry some form of collectibles, but I'm not too sure about them, but those are like the main three. Fourth, if you can squeeze in like comic shops and collectible stores and stuff, like those will have Godzilla and Kong stuff, but maybe not these ones in particular. But as of 2024, really, these guys haven't been really stocked up that much. He has, because he's the newest one. In fact, I literally just got him, like, I think, like, less than a week ago. So, yeah, if there's any form of availability, it'd technically be him, but overall, they've all been sold at, like, pretty much the same stores. And I think that it can also perfectly segue into packaging, which, unfortunately, I don't have his box anymore. But, thankfully, I don't know how, but I meant to keep the uh, Giant Kong 2021 box and the Giant Kong with Beast Glove 2024 box. Now, essentially, they're the same exact style of box. They're the same height. Well, it's about the same dimensions. I will say like the front part's a little larger on this one than it is here. And say what you will about the print. I like this print a lot more than I like that print, although I do have a bit of a soft spot for this print. But like the overall style guide. But yeah, this is just kind of like the basic difference. Uh, they essentially came in all the same style packaging, although the giant Kong Skull Island figure came like a much more stylistic brown box as opposed to have it being uh having its own like unique style guide in comparison to its uh what would be later its successors but essentially that kind of like wraps the whole thing up um i can't really determine like an exact winner for who comes like as far as like the boxes are concerned because other than because like other than the design of the box, they're effectively the same thing. Even at the front of the box, like the little like logo stuff, it's different. Layout's different, and it, they're like a little bit bigger on this one. This one's smaller, and something like that. They're all essentially the same. So aside from that, it comes that back down to the bigger quality in the cells, and less about the ca categories. And I honestly have to say, as far as like third, second, first, third place would have to be the giant call from 21 now okay let's back up here a bit while it is technically true that this guy has some unique uh, aspects to him being definitely having the most uh i would actually debate the best like eye design overall and i definitely like his facial expression a lot being a little bit more like a pissed off looking kong like Ugh, I have to face this stupid lizard again. I'm so done with lizards after living on a whole island of lizards. You know, it, it, it definitely does have that charm. But other than that, he compared to the other Kongs, and I hate being negative, 
he's kind of bland. He's kind of weak. Like, sure, he's big, he's buff. But really, what does he have that these two don't? Really, it's just the face. Like, these two have the color variety, they have the paint, they have, well, these two are equal in posability. This, one, this guy just out of the whole water. But because of the basic posability and the lack of actual paint, because really the only effective paint on this thing is the scarring and the face. I even struggle to even say, like, even though there is a clear color difference, maybe it, on looking at it, it, maybe it's just the plastic, how it's smoothened out here, but roughed up here. Like, that's basically all the paint. And honestly, I really feel like they could have done a lot better with this Kong. So even though I was a bit positive when I got it, and I'm still going to be positive even now, compared to the other Kongs, this is easily my least favorite and easily the weakest, which is ironic because this guy's supposed to be the strongest up until him, compared to him, and I just realized there's a fly in my room. Hi there, Mr. Fly. Uh, you are a feature of this video, I guess, now. Uh, yeah. So anyway, that's about it for this Kong. Second place would have to go to the Skull Island Kong. Um, same kind of deal as before. Basic articulation. Uh, not too, too much to him. Again, he's rather simplistic and basic. However, what makes him better than him, in my personal opinion, is just the color variety. You have a lighter brown, which makes him pop on the shelf. You have a bit of a more darker, lighterish gray. It's like mid-tone gray with some sprayed on pecs, and then you have some better painted eyes as far as like the overall application is concerned, because that just looks like a cartoon. This actually looks more like have some depth to it. And even though the, um, the teeth paint isn't, well, the teeth sculpt is actually done really well, minus the flat and down teeth, I will say overall it's probably like my favorite as far as like the sheer design of the whole face sculpt goes and again even though my biggest problem with the hands is that they just look like gloves or they were just dipped in oil or like black paint of course it still adds some form of variety and i would even probably say again like overall it probably has the best um it's probably tied if not a little less for the best paint job but obviously we also have the articulation to take into account and uh, much like the giant kong from 21 it's just rather basic however the clear winner for me it's going to be this one and uh yeah this guy completely blows these two like completely out of the water his sculpt is amazing at least for what uh, you're getting, especially because, like, the six-inch figure blown up, it's going to be pure amazingness because that figure is, like, one of the best sculpted Playmates figures I've ever seen. I don't know who sculpted that figure, but clearly they had a raise. Um, it also has a lot of nice paint applications, although they're not the most cleanly applied, as you can kind of see. It definitely has a lot of, like, the best like paint work especially like with the addition of the beast club i know it's a bit unfair to compare it because those don't have the beast club but this one does but it just adds a lot more color variety and especially when we're comparing it to our six inch counterparts it definitely like seals the deal as far as like sheer amount of variety is concerned and even like the pink in the mouth just looks a lot better than what came before and even the teeth application is just better than both of them and I think to really like top it off, the articulation was really like the biggest nail in the coffin. Even if it didn't have the superior paint to these two, it has the better articulation. It has the better posability. It has basically the best design, like visually, like lighter brown, sorry, lighter gray to darker brown, like this. This is how I want a Kong figure. And anytime I'm gonna pull down any of these guys, it's gonna probably be this one. But that's not to single these two out. For what these two are, they're fun, basic Kong 11-inch figures that I feel like anyone who wants a large King Kong figure will want and they can get uh, maybe like 30 bucks on the aftermarket. I'm going to guess that's how much. I haven't really checked uh, the aftermarket sales for these two yet. But again, for what they are, they are awesome figures, 
overall. But again, in my personal opinion, the best one is undisputably this one. But with that being said, maybe this one isn't your favorite. Maybe you prefer this one for some reason, or maybe you prefer this one, or maybe you prefer the smaller six inch, or maybe you prefer the the mega roaring ones, or even maybe you might prefer that giant titan ver size version of this guy. Mm, maybe. But with that being said, thank you guys for watching. If you guys liked it, definitely subscribe to the channel. Leave a like if you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace out, everyone.